Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com, which is the home of online video double bass lessons. So if you're a double bass player and you're on your journey and are looking for some inspiration, you want to learn some new music or techniques, please go and check out our website when you get a moment. Now today I'm joined by a new tutor who we have been working with for a week filming some amazing lessons specifically aimed at beginner bass players and also those going a little bit further, the kind of intermediate range. And he's someone who's a close personal friend of mine. He's somebody that I've uh, spent a lot of time with hanging out at double bass conventions and I've listened to him a lot because he is the host of Contra Bass Conversations, clinician, an educator, a freelance bass player and an all-round good guy. So let's welcome Jason Heath. Jason, it's fantastic to have you here today. It has been such a great week, Jeff. It's a real honor to be part of this and to be the new tutor. And I've just, I've had a blast and I've been a fan of what you do for a long time. And it's just so cool to be here. And uh, what we've done this week, I think people are really gonna get a lot out of it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, we've been speaking about this for a couple of years now. The, the kind of need for a, a course specifically for adults who are getting into classical music and uh, something that brings together all the foundational skills. And then we've also had the opportunity to uh, go beyond the foundations uh, with another course as well. But today, Jason, I was wanting to talk to you about the beginner students that you've taught, because I, I mean, you've done a lot of teaching over the years, um, and maybe some of the common problems that they face. And that's obviously a really big topic. So let's have a look at something to do with the left hand, maybe, something to do with the right hand. So yeah, maybe you could speak a little bit on that for us. Sure. Uh, there's a story I heard years ago, an Alexander Technique uh, teacher uh, was talking about where they liked to go when they would go to conferences. And they said they always would go to the double bass players because that's where the real damage was being done. <laughs> and so I think, I think the thing, left hand, right hand that people struggle with the most is just the size of this instrument and just the physicality required to, to play it. Um, so, so I think the thing that people struggle with both for the left hand and the right hand, and just in general, is, is trying to morph their body into something to accommodate this rather than to approach it in a natural way. And a wonderful bass teacher, Paul Ellison from Rice University, he has a great saying that goes for both hands. And he says, your hands should look like your hands. <laughs> and, I, and, and so what he means by that is uh, take the bass away and are you doing anything that you wouldn't do in real life? So are you holding the left hand or the right hand like this or is your shoulder up like this or this? And you'd be amazed from day one if I'm introducing this to a 10 year old or to an adult who's starting off for the first time, it's amazing what people will do to try to get around this instrument. And, and it's just so important for both the left hand and the right hand to just form good habits from the beginning. And it's, it's so interesting when you, whenever you kind of just relax the hands and whether it's the bow grip, especially for French bow, and it just, that's the grip, you know. Mm -hmm. And with the left hand, if just complete relaxation and you bring your hand up and there you are, maybe extend the first finger to get that little gap and, uh, you know, but maintaining that relaxation and allowing the weight of the arms and the body. What about the left hand then? What is there that really kind of jumps out at you? So you want the hands to look like hands, no extreme angles. Is there anything to do with left hand technique that you see commonly? Yeah, I issues? think people make the mistake of thinking that you're gonna be typing on the bass. We spend so much time on a computer when really it's much more like kneading clay. There's a three dimensionality to the, to the left hand that, that even though it looks like the fingers are going up and down, and they are going up and down, if the fingerboard and the strings weren't there, they'd really be going into the hand like this. And I think that that's an important concept. That our strength comes from the, the curvature of our fingers. So we're not at the keyboard typing or on our phone. We're actually doing something a little bit more physical. And I love the, the image of kneading clay. I think that both yeah. for the left hand and the right hand, that's, that's a, a healthy approach to the bass. Uh, and obviously, you know, you're a French bow player. Do you also play German and... Uh, is yeah, a... I play a little German bow. Yeah. I've had a lot of German bow students. And the beautiful yeah. thing is they're so similar. I mean, yeah. initially you think, that, I mean, there are certainly, yes, there are differences from here on down, especially, but but the, the concepts transfer so well there. Each bow has a little bit of an advantage in, in some ways and, and has a little bit less of an advantage in other ways, but they're so similar. So I do play both, and I really do think that the concepts are the similar are, are similar, especially if you just think about your hands looking like your hands. If you're playing German bow, you don't want to be sticking anything the way, you know, that it wouldn't yeah. be in regular life. And for French bow, the same thing. And, and really, if you think about it, both hands end up looking almost identical for both a good bow hold yeah. and a good left hand orientation. 
Well, listen, I think that is a fantastic place to kind of wrap things up. And, and, and for everybody uh, listening, and I think for all of us, is to try and get some feedback on your playing by playing in front of your friends and colleagues and playing in front of a mirror, filming yourself. Mm -hmm. It'd be really interesting for you, actually, to watch back all of the video that we've, we've done because it's, you will be watching hours and hours of, of footage of yourself. And I bet you you'll see some things that you were doing that you perhaps didn't realize. And I, I've certainly found that with myself. And it's a, it's a great tool for learning and, and establishing those, those good practices that you were discussing there. Um, so Jason, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for being here to film these courses and these lessons, and we will be sharing much more over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned to discoverdoublebase.com. Also, of course, if you don't know Jason already, he's from Contrabase Conversations. I don't know if we've mentioned this already, but you need to be checking out that podcast. So we'll be providing links for you um, below this video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.